Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Bee. Today, I answer questions that were written in by survivors. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and let's go. So I'm going to read to you a question from a survivor. How do I get over having given your body to a narcissist and sex being normal in the beginning, but after verbal or physical abuse, he'd say, I don't deserve to sleep next to or with you. And then to having sexual dysfunction and blaming it on my weight. Now coupled with never feeling enough. How do you rebuild your esteem after a narcissist when you're paranoid about every beautiful or superficial woman out there? How can we find what we are accountable for without it drawing us back into cognitive dissonance and blaming ourselves. Get to a point where you know the information and get bored researching and you feel stuck because you're still gaslighting yourself. Abuse yourself and now get triggered back into cognitive dissonance. So it sounds like a lot of what you're talking about is how to regain self-esteem and how to accept yourself for being who you are and how you are and how to love yourself. The narcissist uses sex as power and control. They manipulate because they know it keeps people attached and bonded to them. They also do not have the same experience of sex and they use us for what we are for them. They use us as objects. I think forgiving yourself for being in the situation is part of the beginning. And a way to work with that can be to Understand that you didn't know what was happening when it was happening and that by the time you understood what was happening, you were fully trauma bonded to this person. You felt in love with them and you were doing everything you could to have a normal, healthy relationship. So in a sense, it's forget the part of your brain and the part of yourself that sees it now is not the same person who was experiencing it then. And so you can have some compassion for the person that you were in that situation and tell yourself that you're, you weren't at fault for what happened. Through doing this, you can start to disbelieve the lies that they told you. The things that they told you to keep you down were just exactly that. They were there to devalue you and keep you down. They were there to keep you bonded to them because if they can knock you down, then they're the ones who get to build you back up. And in that sense, you become sort of putty in their hands because you're constantly then seeking the approval and the attention and the acceptance of this person, not looking for yourself at who you actually are. In order to rebuild self-esteem in this regard, you can start with the basics of doing your hair the way you like, putting on makeup or not, whatever you choose, um, making your appearance look lovely to yourself, and actually appreciating it by noticing that your efforts that you put into yourself have an effect on the way you feel about yourself. That You have to notice it. You have to go past just the doing into the noticing and taking a deep breath and realizing that you're doing something for yourself and that this is to help you move to the next level of healing, which is getting beyond the negative beliefs that the narcissist programmed into your head. You can stop comparing yourself to other people. Every survivor that is out there has something redeemable about them and something beautiful about them. I am not you. You are not me. I am not her. There is no, it does no good to compare yourself to other people. If there's similarities, it does you no good to to compare yourself to other people. If somebody wants you for your looks alone or your ability to perform sexually, they are not worth having. So that's another aspect to remember. Another thing that can help is realizing that every, every beautiful woman that walks down the street also has problems that are going on within, within her and her own life. People aren't perfect. So the reason comparisons can be so detrimental is they're inaccurate and they're false. So you're basically lying to yourself when you give yourself a comparison with another person. We don't know what goes on inside another person's experience. Someone completely beautiful can have a miserable life. <clears throat> Someone... Most of us, if you've ever been on a survivor's board, you will see a, a sea of gorgeous faces and every single one of them is suffering from abuse. So perspective, perspective that this, these comparisons you're making are part of the programming and to stop them, to just stop them, to put, to see it happening and say, okay, I'm not going to compare myself to that person. I don't know their story. And there is nothing about beauty alone that makes that person more 
special, more important, more desirable than me. So how to know what you're accountable for so that you're not drawn back into cognitive dissonance. And on, on gaslighting yourself, I think those go hand in hand. If you feel like you are telling yourself the same story that you heard from the mouths of a narcissist or from what you assumed to be what the narcissist was thinking, then you are gaslighting yourself because it is going against your actual truth. When you catch yourself doing it, you, you find your truth. You find what the actual truth is and you have to sit with that and contrast it with the gaslighting experience and realize which one of these is the, tr is the reality I want to have in my life. It can be a matter of choice at that point for some people. It can be harder for others to get to the point of choice, but you can, you can write them down and work your way toward it. You can write down the, the thing you're telling yourself, what you believe is gaslighting yourself, and then defend it with your truth on paper and have two separate columns. One is the false belief and the gaslighting, and the other one is the actual truth. You can simplify things by taking away qualifiers, like if I were more pretty, then this would happen. If I were only smarter, then this would happen. And just look at the, the fact. Those qualifiers do nothing to serve you, and in fact, they are traps that keep you stuck. They keep you right where you're at and unable to move beyond them because they're the overriding thought and belief that's going on in your head. And they're not actually truths. They are limiting self-beliefs. And I'm going to go on to the next question. And this may relate because they usually do. Let's see. How do I learn to trust in a new relationship without falling into the same narcissistic pattern? This is a really common question and a really big fear of a lot of survivors and it can be difficult for them to move into new relationships because of this fear. So the answer in my opinion is you need to learn to trust yourself. You need to learn what your boundaries are, uh, where your lines are and what it means when someone crosses them, what it, what it looks like to not have those lines crossed, how it feels to be in control of the boundary you place for yourself. You can practice that as you enter into relationships or with the friendships that you have in a very gentle and fair way by understanding where you feel uncomfortable and where you feel a boundary has been crossed and then stepping back and setting a boundary. Um, if you wanted to say no to something, but you said yes anyway, maybe then saying to your friend, hey, you know what? I really should have said no to this. I, did, I said yes out of habit. I'm going to have to not do this thing. and then holding to that boundary. I mean, that's a really basic boundary, but you can take that into any area that you feel like a narcissist might cross. And knowing that the biggest ones are things like the way you're treated, the respect you have from the other person, quality of communication, being that it is two-sided, not one-sided, or if the focus is too much in, on one person or the other, there's some imbalance there. You can, that can be a, a place to set a boundary around what you will and won't accept from people. So it's really raising your standards as well for how you will be treated and not letting anyone cross beyond that. And that's not to say people don't have bad days or bad experiences. I'm not saying everyone out there is, is a narcissist or everyone's going to hurt you. But enough chances is enough chances. And we have to learn before we become bonded to these people before we become bonded to anyone as a survivor that to keep safe we have to really get to know who they are we have to know ourselves within the situation so it's not just watching them it's watching you if you are drawn to everything this person does and you cannot see the forest for the trees something's up doesn't mean they're a narcissist but it means something within you is not holding itself accountable and itself to um you're not staying present to yourself as well as the other person. So it's learning about yourself. It's learning to turn back inward and ask yourself what's going on. What am I feeling? And how, how can I relate to this person in a more authentic way? And when I do, what happens? I think so much of it comes back to trusting self. Is that going to keep you 100% safe? No, it's not going to keep you 100% safe, but it will limit the amount of time you spend wasted on somebody 
that is later going to abuse you. It's knowing that you can say no and you can say this is over before it gets to the point where you're fully trauma bonded to this person. Slowing down relationships so that you're not sexually involved or becoming incredibly romantically involved before you know what your boundaries are and how, how you interact with this person and how they interact back with you. And if you can hold your own and not get yourself completely lost in their world. Pretty much when it comes to how to keep oneself safe, I believe that a lot of it is understanding what you can and cannot control and taking the things you can have effect on and can have cha- have some power over, which is your own heart, and growing that piece. Because you can't control what other people are going to do, and you can't know the intent of another person. You can only know your own intent, and you can learn to stay true to that intent and learn to stay true to self. If somebody is making you feel like you are not true to yourself, then something is wrong. So you see how you can find the things that make you feel uncomfortable and why. And if they are going against your morals, your beliefs, your values, standards, how you wish to experience a relationship, something needs to be either communicated about or changed or left. And one more question for today. I have been educating myself to the point of being nauseous. I'm starting to feel like he still has all the power because all I'm doing is reading, listening, and learning about what is wrong with him. Now that I have a new man in my life, I have fears of discovering he's just really a skilled narcissist. Sometimes nightmares. I have taken quizzes that say he is not. I mean, he can feel lazy and a bit selfish. He spends money as soon as we have it, but he is not mean. He is nice. And he's not so nice that it seems like love bombing. When he says he will do something, he eventually does it. To me, that shows he's just an average guy. Why am I so paranoid? How do I make myself understand that this guy is just a guy and not a narcissist? I think what I said to the question previously is you look at yourself. You look at the things that make you uncomfortable, the things that, what are you, what's coming up for you? Where are your boundaries being crossed? Where do you know what your boundaries are with this person? Again, we can only look at ourself and make changes there and then observe the other person and how they react to us and how they respond to us. So I don't know how involved you are with this other person yet. You can slow things down to where you're doing lots of different things. So you experience them in different situations and see how they react to different people, different, different people, different situations, how they are with family, how they are with your friends, how they are with their friends, how they are around children, how they are around pets, how do they treat the wait staff, how do they treat other people, how do they talk about their exes, how do they talk about their friends, how do they, how do they talk about the way people think about them. These things start to come out with a narcissist. They start to say things like, everyone thinks I'm this, or my ex was that, they're all crazy. You know, these things come out as you get to know them, and that takes time, and it takes natural conversations. I mean, you can't just help someone with a bunch of questions and have them answer and know they're not a narcissist. You have to give it the time and the space that it needs to see who they really are. And as you do this, your own trust in them will either grow or diminish. At the same time, if you are making sure that you're clear about what you want for your life and you're clear about what is acceptable for the way you're treated, how you feel the most respected when someone responds to you in difficult situations, how you feel the most respected and loved when someone responds to you in other situations, good or bad. It's how it comes back to trusting self again and observing the other. So all of those things combined, you can start to get a bigger picture of what's going on. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being. For information about me, about coaching, group coaching, or if you have any questions, see the comments below. Hit subscribe and see you next time. Bye-bye.